Hello lovely people, welcome to Brown Strings. I'm Henriette and today is day 11 of the Virtual Violin Practice Play Along. Today we're going to develop our bowing technique a little bit more and we're going to do some new exercises in our bowing and then we will further explore the D major scale and we will go and do our improvisation in the key of D major. So get your stuff ready and we'll go get started in a moment. So let's tune you up first, shall we? Here's your A. talked about that before but now I want you to really squeeze them hard and that's when you push the bow down into the string and I want you to have a look here just where your bow is in contact with the string and I want you to watch very closely how you push the, the stick onto the hair of the bow so I want you to try that a couple of times so squeeze your fingers and squeeze that stick, the wooden part of the bow, onto the hair of the bow. And you can perhaps feel that the bow is very springy and it springs back when you let go. Now, in previous lessons we have been thinking about dropping your shoulders down and leaning the bow into the string. And that idea I want you to try and incorporate with our exercise today. So, pop your violin down in the middle again on the D string squeeze your fingers and now really hang off that bow with your arm and then let go and see if you can do that again squeeze your fingers hang off that bow with your arm so you let the weight of your arm go into the string as well as squeezing it with your fingers let's try that a few more times shall we squeeze and one more time squeeze and hang off the bow good now Let's now find our proper stance. Step forward one step with your left foot and be flexible in your legs. Then we'll do this exercise again. And my question to you is, um, does that feel any different now? Squeeze and hang off it and let go. Make sure your legs are nice and relaxed. Squeeze the, the bow with your hand and let it hang off the string and relax. And again, how does that feel? Does it feel different now your legs are more relaxed? One more time. And perhaps you can write in the comment section below what your answer is to that question. And it would be very interesting to see your answers to that question. And we might just work out to see if more people think that doesn't make a difference. 
or more people think that does make a difference. So go on, let's write in the comments section below today. Now, today we take that idea of squeezing the bow a little bit further. And what I'd like you to do on the open string, go in the middle about there. And then as soon as you relax your squeezing of your bow, start to move it down bow. So you get a little bit of a spring in your bowing. <laughs> And then put the pressure back on again when you get to the point. Now you're squeezing it here. So I want you to let go of that squeezing and then start to bow. And in the middle, you put your squeeze back on. So let go, squeeze, let go, squeeze. I'm lifting my index finger up just for you to see when I'm squeezing and when I'm not squeezing. But I would like you to keep your index finger on the bow all the time because you can squeeze it and release it like that. But it's just not as clear on the video, you see? So I'm going to do that again. Squeeze your bow into the string. Then let go. And put the pressure back on. Let go. Squeeze it again. Let go. Squeeze it again. You see, we're exploring this technique by just playing it slowly and you'll get better at this technique really quickly. Now let's go on to the D string in the middle. Again, do the same thing. Squeeze your bow and then let go. That's it. Now I want you to release that pressure a bit more quickly so instead of releasing it I want you to release it almost with a little snap let go that's it and you may hear a little kick in the sound so you can hear da, da. you see you've got a little accent now at the beginning of your bow stroke and when you get that, that bow stroke is called martelet bowing. Now, martelet is the name of the bow stroke when you play on the upper half of the bow and you start with, a, with some pressure on the bow and then you suddenly release that pressure. The sound that you make, the sound which starts with a little accent, is called staccato. So those are the two differences here. The sound is called staccato. The bow stroke is called martelet. Now let's carry on our martelet practice now on the A string and I want you to get back stepping forward with your left foot again and make your playing, make your legs really supple and loose and relax your legs when we do that and now I want you to squeeze that bow again and then let go. Squeeze it and let go. You see, the more abruptly you release the pressure of that bow, the more bright your kick is going to be, the more energetic your staccato is going to be, you see. So let's practice it on the E string now. Make sure your legs are loose. Okay, squeeze the bow into the string and let go. Some practice really good and you notice that over the weeks that we've been doing this now we are continually improving your bow control and that is a lovely thing and that is valid at every level of playing so if you're a beginner that is very useful to get to know some more about bow control if you're an advanced player you cannot get enough of bow control practice so well done for sticking with me now let's have a left hand exercise now shall we uh, we've done our finger tapping um, in day 10 and in day 9 and today we're going to practice some flexibility in our fingers rather than power so let's put your bow aside and what i'd like you to do is on, go on the a string so let's put your fingers one and two on the string together 
and now I want you to pretend that your first finger is going to polish this bit of string behind your second finger. So your finger is going to go up and down and up and down and you can see you can open your finger joint right here uh, because a first finger can do that you see and that's really what we're doing. So you want to use your finger joint here to create that space. That's a lovely exercise to do. Okay, so now let's polish the second finger and let's put fingers one, two and three on. Take your first finger off. And now we're just going to polish the second finger behind the third. So you slide your finger up until it can't go any further and then you pull it back. Now you want to make sure that this ridge of knuckles is level with the string. So if this is you, that becomes a whole lot harder. So what you want to do is find that finger line where your finger is joined onto your hand and place that level with the E string right there. We'll try the second finger again, shall we? So we're having the third finger on and now we're polishing that string behind the third finger with your second finger. Excellent. Now let's practice polishing the third finger. So you're putting your fourth finger down and you polish the third finger. Be careful again, if your hand is like that, that won't work. So have this ridge of knuckles level with the E string again. Here we go again. Wonderful. So now we've only got our pinky left, so let's put our third finger on the string and polish the string behind the third finger. So you might practice bending and stretching your little finger. Uh, but there are various different ways uh, a pinky works, so if that doesn't quite work for you, if it locks, just give your little finger a little rest before you try it again very gently, because for some this is really, really nearly impossible to do. So take your time. If that keeps sliding, just put it back into place again. There you go. And give your arm a well-deserved rest. Because again, that can be quite a strain on your arm if you're not used to doing that. So if that feels very, very difficult to do, good job, well done, you're stretching yourself. If that is very easy, well done, you're strengthening your hand there. So next, let's swap over, let's put your violin down and pick up your bow. And today I want you to really think about that bow hold again. So have your middle finger and your thumb opposite, make a little gap. Make sure that you're in the right corner with your thumb. There we go. And let's do our bow exercises again today. So first of all, we're working on some flexibility. Make your wrist really, really soft. Great. Big windscreen wipers. And feel the shift in balance. Index finger, little finger, index finger, little finger, index finger, little finger. Right, let's have the bow upright, shall we? And we'll do some crab crawling. So you go up and up and up and up. Take this at your own pace. Most people will actually be much faster than I. So step by step you go up there step by step take your time and when you get back to the heel of the bow let's see if you can find that correct bow hold again and i would like you to check that your little finger is nicely on the side edge and once you've got all of that sorted let's tap your index finger now can you tap your middle finger? Beautiful. Now can you tap your ring finger? A whole lot more difficult for most people. And now can you tap your little finger and place it on the side? So be careful that tapping is not like that. But you really pick it up from here and then place it on the side. And all that time your fingers are getting stronger. Well done. Okay, so now let's have the bow vertical like this. 
move it up to the ceiling whilst you squeeze your bow and now release it and you move the bow down up bend your fingers down straighten your fingers up bend your fingers down straighten your fingers one more time up bend down stretch awesome well done so let's pick up our violin now and we're going to play the D major scale now we played it slurred yesterday and we're going to do that again and we're going to work on our string crossings today again so you want to make sure that you've got the correct level for every string in your right elbow and I want you to play this scale two notes slurred and we're really going to look how your bow is crossing from one string to another. Here we go. And... fourth finger to it because if we only play keep on playing up to the third finger we miss out on a lot of practice for that pinky that perhaps needs it the most because this is the smallest finger with the thinnest muscles so now we're going to go up and over the D and we're playing the fourth finger and then we go down and <laughs> isn't it so now you've got an open a slurred onto three fingers on the d string as you come down so let's try that again and successful your string crossing is going to be with your bow here okay that also means now that we are playing an open string and a third finger on D as we slur our notes coming down we need to get the timing of your string crossings and your bow changes absolutely precisely right so let's have a think how that works shall we so let's play this scale again <laughs> Is going down and then I'm playing lift your elbow 
super practice, well done. So let's play the D arpeggio next, nice and long straight bows. <laughs> for your improvisation. Today we're going to improvise in the key of D major as we've done before and I want you to pick a variation of sections of the D major scale and sections of the D arpeggio. So if you feel that up until this point you've been fairly cautious and maybe just played sections of the scale Go on and experiment with the arpeggio a little bit. You know very well how the D major arpeggio goes. So we're going to do this question and answer uh, way of improvising again. So instead of uh, copying what I do, I want you to feel free to experiment with your own versions of the improvisation again. So I'm going to explore the arpeggios a lot today. So Take your pick, whatever you'd like to do. If I play my section, I want you to answer in music, as it were. So we get this question and answer going. <laughs> Well done. If you manage that, that is well impressive. Very, very good. So I'd like to know also whether you find this very, very hard, whether you find this intermediately difficult or whether you find this super easy. So go on again, please write in that comment section so that I know for the next couple of sessions, I can make it either faster or slower, depending on what people like. So experience comes with practice doesn't it so let's have another go and if you were trying to put more arpeggios in last time perhaps now you can put some more scale sections in and if you've done only separate bows so far why not add a few slurs as well <laughs> How did you make that? You've got lots of scope here and as I've said so many times before now, 
Bear in mind that improvisation has no mistakes. So if you can't think of anything to play, and I really hope that by now most of you will feel comfortable to play, but if you still find it really, really hard to get going, why not play open string? <laughs> when you do that because this is not something that we do very often in everyday life and that's why I want to use this opportunity to practice this a little bit with you. So thank you for coming along with me, coming on this journey with me. Very well done for having a go. On the other hand if you have perhaps improvised a little bit more and you are ready to move on why not expand your range? Because if you're a little bit further advanced, you might even play this higher octave, mightn't you? Or somewhere like that. So try to push your boundaries a little bit further every day. So have a go at trying something that you've never done before. So we'll have one more uh, improvisation section. So I'm going to play you something. Can you respond? So you're trying all the time to expand your improvisation a lot and I really am in awe of you for having a go so well done. When we get to day 12 we will start to explore it even further and the next week we will we'll, <laughs> from lesson 13 onwards we will st start to do some other things but I'm hoping you might join me tomorrow in day 12 and really come on board and pushing that improvisation. So now that we're coming to the end of this lesson, let's get your normal music out that your teacher has set you and let's play all your pieces, all your scales, everything to the best of your ability. So thank you very much for watching today and I very much look forward to seeing you in day 12. Goodbye.